Have you ever wondered, is it possible to laser engrave 3D prints? We did too, so we tried it. And the answer, it turns out, is sort of, or it depends. Stay tuned to find out what we discovered. We started out by printing a series of plates in various colors of both PLA and ABS. We printed them face down with at least six layers on the side we planned on trying to engrave. For this test, we used an X-Tool F1. It has both a 2-watt infrared laser as well as a 10-watt blue diode laser. And despite its fairly limited working area of 115 millimeters square, it can accommodate much taller items that many other laser engravers can't. We set up a test file containing text at two different sizes and some simple graphics. We also varied the power output because the total power of each laser was so different. Then, it was time to see what these lasers would actually do to these plates. We started with a white PLA. We used the F1's framing function to double check that our design was going to go where it was supposed to. Then we click start. Now, we've sped up this part quite a bit, but you'll notice that we shot these with the protective hood up so that the camera had full view of the action. For safety reasons, we don't recommend you do this, especially when the blue diode laser is doing its thing. It's clear that the camera sensor really couldn't handle it, and we were almost sure we were going to fry it. Luckily for us, it seems to have survived. And after a brilliant and semi-terrifying light show, there seems to have been very little effect on the white PLA. It probably goes without saying, but remember that when you're doing anything like this, to do it in a well-ventilated room. You're essentially vaporizing plastic, and that's all going into the air, and you really don't want to be inhaling any of that. Next up was the gray PLA. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, though the results still didn't seem great. The IR laser seems to have kind of a raised scarring effect, while the blue diode laser sort of just unevenly melted the PLA. So far, not promising. Again, we're playing this laser footage back at four times the speed, and remember that the longer a laser is on something, the higher chance there is for fire, so always be ready just in case. Next up was the black PLA, a much cleaner and sharper result. The IR laser created a fairly sharp and lighter colored relief, and the diode laser etched cleanly into the surface of the plate. We then followed with a plate of red PLA. The IR laser had no effect, but the blue diode laser affected the red in a similar way as the black plate. At this point, we don't completely understand the science behind this, but remembering that the things that appear red to us are things that are actually reflecting the red part of the spectrum, it seems to make sense that the infrared of the IR laser might have been part of the spectrum the red plate reflected. Then it was time to move on to the ABS plates, and again, we started with the white. We expected the white ABS to react the same as the PLA, but we were surprised to discover that the IR laser created reasonably sharp dark marks. 
and another spectacular light show from the blue diode laser. But again, no effect on the white. Now, the black ABS resulted in what was probably the best outcome of the entire test. The IR laser resulted in the sharpest and most consistent image, which was a very light brown with a slight relief, and the blue diode laser also created a sharp-edged etch. Our final plate for this test was the yellow ABS. The IR laser created markings similar to those as on the white ABS, and the diode laser etched reasonably into the surface, though not as cleanly or sharply as on the black. So, what are our conclusions? As far as filament goes, these really do just barely scratch the surface. But as we found out, color made a really big difference as well as how dark or light those colors are. While you might be able to make some educated guesses based on the color of the filament, and the type of laser you're using. We suspect that the chemical makeup of each filament also plays a big role in what kind of result you'd end up with. Before taking the step of blasting your precious 3D piece with a laser, we'd recommend that you first test what the result might be on a test plate for each different filament you're using, as we've done here. Despite that slight unpredictability and inconsistency of the effects from material to material, there is some potential to do some things not otherwise possible or as easily done any other way. We know that anyone watching this is likely going to have some potential uses already in mind. This marking process should be a good candidate for things that are going to be used outdoors or are going to get handled a lot. Just to confirm, the results are pretty durable. When that laser hits the material, it's either burning the material away, or it's bubbling and or melting it at a microscopic level. So your design should be waterproof.
It should also be safe with alcohol and similar cleaners. Design or marks applied in this method should last a long time, especially when using material like ASA or ABS. Those of you with a keen eye might notice that we've both sped up and cut out most of the footage of the blue diode laser in action. We did this to minimize the on-screen flashing. But if anyone does want to see the full unedited footage of the laser etching on these plates, let us know in the comments.